eight, seven, six. NASA spends billions on space missions every year. However, their budget only makes up less than half of 1% of every tax dollar. So I've done the impossible and made this rocket for like, not that much dollars. Yeah, I bet NASA's feeling pretty dumb right now. And I'm sure they're at the edge of their seats to find out how this is made. So I'll let you in on the secret. The body of the rocket is completely 3D printed. And if there's one thing that gives me faith in this actually working, it's that I didn't design it. And if you want to print this yourself, I'll put a link in the description of the person who did. You'll need a few crucial things before assembling the rocket. The fins, the main body tube, the nose cone, and the nose cone coupler. As for the internal components, I'll need some string, a parachute, some protective tissue, and of course, a solid rocket engine. Now this may look small, but it is mighty. Now I'm gonna need to fit this into the bottom of the rocket, but it appears we have a problem. It's not exactly a snug fit, as it never was in my case. So I'll need to measure the diameter and design a fitting to insert into the rocket. It doesn't need to be perfect, because I could always add some tape around it to increase the thickness. And I could do the same with the rocket itself. You know what they say, it's always better to go too small than to go too big. Or something like that, I don't know. Now that the bottom portion is complete, I can move on to the body tube. And the body tube also has a pretty loose connection. So I'm going to tape this up as well. Now I just need to stuff some protective tissue into the rocket. This will prevent the parachute from catching on fire, which won't be favorable as the rocket is flying towards your head at 100 miles per hour. But let's forget about this for now and focus on connecting the nose cone to the nose cone coupler. There's two holes in the middle of them, which I could use to just screw them together, but I'm gonna add some glue as well, just to be safe. This size should work well enough. Now, 3D printed things have a tendency to break when you screw into them. So I'm just going to heat up the nail a bit. And hopefully that's enough to stop it from... So I'm just going to take out the battery here. And probably forget about it. Okay, second attempt. Next, I'll need to add the parachute, but before I do that, I'll need to add the string, and you'll see why in just a moment. Now, according to the website, this stuff is fire resistant, and that's just for extra precaution, but if you don't have any fire resistant string, some normal string might work out. I'll need to find a way to secure this into the inside of the rocket. I'm gonna use an absurd amount of duct tape to secure the string into the rocket. All right, now that should be good enough, but if it's not, then I made a huge mistake. Now I'm just going to tie the other end of the string onto this clip here. Now this isn't necessary, but it'll make things a little bit easier. It's finally time to add the parachute, so I'm just going to attach the end of the strings connected to the parachute onto this clip here. Then I'll just attach some string to the nose cone. Now I'm going to attach the end of this string onto this clip, like I did with the other string. Now I wasn't quite sure how to fold up a parachute for proper deployment, but I looked it up and it turns out to be quite simple. I just need to crunch up the parachute like this, and then fold it onto itself, including the string. Now I'll just need to stuff it into the rocket. Now the nose cone fits loosely into the rocket, but I'm not going to add any tape here because I want that. At the end of the rocket cycle, it will burn up and then have a delayed explosion, which will push out the nose cone and hopefully release the parachute in deploying it. Nope, it won't. So I'm just going to clip this onto the string down here and hopefully that'll give it more room to come out. Perfect. Now the rocket is finally complete. All that's left to do is to build the launch pad, which I've already done, just off camera to save you the time. 
I just drilled a hole in this piece of wood here and stuck a rod in there to stabilize the rocket during takeoff. A longer rod would be favorable, but I couldn't find anything better around the house. So I'll just have to make this work out, and it's better than nothing at all. All right, it's finally time to set off this rocket and go to the moon. This is what I'll be using to launch the rocket. I'll just have to pass a current through here and the tip will heat up and ignite the rocket engine. Now it's gonna launch at a bit of an angle and that's to prevent it from flying into my house like a ballistic missile. Now I probably shouldn't be this close to ignite it, but I ain't no bitch. All right, maybe I am a little bit, but launching in T minus eight, four, five, three and a half. All right. Well, I forgot to press record, so that kind of sucked but you could kind of see the path it took here. The good news though, is that the parachute deployed, so that's good. Wow, and that nose cone is just stuck into the ground. All right, first attempt was a fail. I think the reason it didn't launch in a straight line is because the rod was either too short or it was too thick. So what I did was strip off a thick layer of paint that was surrounding it. And let's go for another try, hopefully it works this time. Try not to do that again, either. All right, this time the rocket's gonna be sticking out a little bit, and maybe that will be better or worse. We'll find out. From the first launch, the nose cone melted a little bit, and it's a little bit stiff on there now. So I'm just not gonna put it in all the way, and hopefully the explosion will be enough to push it out. All right, second attempt in three, two, one. Well, that did do a little bit better. The parachute did deploy and fell into a tree. It was definitely a little bit wobbly though. Now I only have one more rocket engine left and it's getting pretty dark. So I'm gonna try again tomorrow and make some improvements on the rocket, especially on the rod and launch pad. All right, it's another day and I ordered myself a much larger launch rod. I've also made some improvements to the rocket by making it much longer and that should help it stabilize a bit better and it just looks cooler. Three, two, one. All right, so I have good news and even gooder news. The good news is that the rocket launched much better than the previous two tests. The even gooder news is that I have no idea where it landed and it's probably out there causing a forest fire right now. So if you ever see another forest fire story on the news anytime soon, I'm proud to say it was probably me. And with that being said, bye.